My name is Rowan Croft and I'm part of the Crest Research Group at the University of Adelaide. I'll be presenting the paper An Investigation of Inconsistency of Software Vulnerability Severity Across Data Sources, which was conducted by myself, Alibaba and Lili. Vulnerability reporting and disclosure aims to ensure that product vendors and users can fix or mitigate security flaws before the bad guys can exploit them. Just a few months ago, organizations around the world scrambled to patch the Log4j vulnerability after its full disclosure. Vulnerab vulnerability reporting is a critically important process that lets users stay one step ahead. As such, organizations and security vendors will expend significant efforts towards the thorough reporting lifecycle. We break this down into three main steps that most large organizations will follow. Firstly, users or developers will identify vulnerabilities that exist in a software system. These vulnerabilities are reported as bug reports to the development team, who then work on producing a vulnerability patch for that software. Once a patch is released, the vulnerability will often be disclosed to the public through the internal vendor advisory of that particular software, so that its users are aware of the vulnerability and can apply the necessary patch. Finally, the vulnerability will be recorded in vulnerability databases to provide wider dissemination to the general public. Each of these data sources acts fairly independently to each other and are maintained individually. However, due to the abundance of software vulnerabilities, just reporting them is often not enough. Hence, vulnerability reporting data sources will additionally provide assessment information that is required by practitioners to help prioritize vulnerabilities. Particularly, the severity of a vulnerability is often additionally recorded to help users have a straightforward way of ranking vulnerability. Now let's focus on the vulnerability severity. The reporting data sources are providing this information at different stages of the reporting lifecycle, inferred independently by different analysts and scoring schemes. This results in the ability for the same vulnerability to receive different severity assessment depending on the data source. Let's look at a real world example here. This is a vulnerability for a use after free vulnerability that was reported in the Mozilla Firefox system. In the bug report, it was assigned a normal or medium severity assignment by the developers who initially discovered it. Once patched, the vulnerability was analyzed by the security team and listed in the vulnerability advisory as a high severity. Finally, the vulnerability was documented in the National Vulnerability Database, where it was again assessed by additional security analysts and finally concluded as being of low severity. Despite this being the same vulnerability, recorded and assessed in different places, there appears to be little agreement in the actual severity rating. Whilst this inconsistency may be expected due to the independent nature of these sources, it's problematic as these data sources would produce different severity rankings when a bunch of vulnerabilities are examined collectively. This adds unreliability to the subsequent inferred prioritization schemes. We set out to thoroughly explore this problem by investigating the characteristics, causes, and impacts of the inconsistency. Firstly, we investigate its nature by determining the actual prevalence and trends of deferring severity rankings across these data sources. Primarily, we aim to raise the awareness of this issue. Next, we investigate quantitative and categorical bug report attributes that may lead to vulnerabilities receiving an inconsistent assessment later on. By pinpointing correlating factors, we can promote aspects that may lead to better severity assessment and judgment. And finally, for our third research question, main researchers also use these data sets to derive insights or develop data-driven models. Researchers rely on the reliability and correctness of this data. 
but as different data sources produce different severity outputs, we examine what impact the choice of data set can have on the downstream data-driven tasks. Particularly, we examine severity prediction, which uses learning-based models to re predict report severity, as this has been quite an active research area in past years. To conduct our study, we needed to collect a large number of vulnerability reports across the full reporting lifecycle. To ensure this complete view, we only collected vulnerability reports from the Mozilla Firefox project, as the Mozilla Foundation has very re thorough reporting practices which allowed us to trace the vulnerability reports. We identified all recorded vulnerabilities through the Mozilla Foundation Security Advisory, which is maintained by an internal Mozilla Foundation security team. Each Mozilla advisory entry had an associated bug report and a unique CVE ID attached to it. Hence, for each reported vulnerability, we were able to collect its associated entry in the Bugzilla bug reporting system, the Mozilla advisory, and the National Vulnerability Database. Severity rankings are assigned most commonly by bug reporters in Bugzilla, and NVD relies upon special NVD analysts for assessment. By connecting each entry across each of these free sources, we can observe whether the severity ranking changes for a particular vulnerability across this life cycle. To ensure fair comparison, we normalized the categorical severity rankings of each data source to a consistent ordinal scale of one to four with one being critical, two high, three medium, and four is low severity. In total, we collected 2,455 unique vulnerability reports from a 10 year time period. Research question one firstly investigated the prevalence of the inconsistency. Figure one here shows the average distribution of severity rankings for each data source. Now, Bugzilla rankings were primarily conservative. They had an average ranking of medium severity, whereas the internal Mozilla advisory, on the other hand, tended to usually increase these severity rankings with a medium critical severity. This may imply that vulnerability severity is often underestimated at first reporting. We found that the vulnerabilities which received these underestimated severity scores were also assigned a lower prioritization value for the bug report, so it has impact. Using the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, we found that the Bugzilla severity rankings had a weak correlation to the other two sources, whereas the Mozilla Advisory and NVD actually had a moderate to strong correlation. This implies that expert assigned severity scores may be more reliable than the initial assessment scores in the bug report. For research question two, to investigate the causes of inconsistency, we compared the severity rankings produced in Bugzilla reports to those of the Mozilla Security Advisory. We treated the Mozilla Advisory assessment as more correct as is conducted by a dedicated security team. Hence, discrepancy would imply initial severity misjudgment for the bug report. We investigate a variety of bug report attributes related to the fixed difficulty, review process, vulnerability nature, and reporter expertise to identify potential correlation to misjudgment. We identified correlation of these explanatory attributes to the severity misjudgment using a logistic regression model. We firstly removed all correlated explanatory variables using Spearman's rank correlation test, and we, ret we retained 10 independent attributes. Table 2 shows these attributes and their associated z-scores. The significantly correlated attributes are marked with arrows depending on the nature of their correlation. Primarily, we observed that bug reporters with more experience, either through profile age or practical experience of submitting patches, 
were actually more likely to incorrectly assess the severity of the bug report. We speculate that these reporters may either be busier and hence spend less time on bug reports, or still lack the needed security knowledge despite being experienced. We also found that bug reports which had exceedingly long descriptions, commonly due to lengthy error logs and stack chases, were also more commonly underestimated. This might be because they were so common. 36% of the analyzed vulnerabilities had associated crash data. Finally, due to the discrepancy in these data sources, we examined what impacts that the choice for data selection would have on the downstream data-driven task of severity prediction. Now, data selection is an important consideration for this task due to the time delay of the reports. Bug reports are produced instantaneously upon the discovery of a vulnerability, whereas NVD entries are usually delayed by several months. Now, previous severity prediction research has utilized both of these data sources. We built our models using standard practices where the encoded text description of each report acted as features for the prediction model. Figure 4 here displays the relative performance. We can see that NVD performed the best, which may be credited to the high quality and consistent reporting schemes of NVD. Conversely, the Mozilla advisory produced the worst performing prediction model, potentially because many advisory entries lacked meaningful descriptions. We also experimented with transferring labels to other sources to see the extent of the disparity and whether the knowledge of in these data sources can be transferred from one source to another. Figure 5 displays the results of these experiments, where each, shell, each cell shows the percentage performance change in comparison to using labels of the same source to the description. We can see that the performance noticeably drops for majority of cases, which further highlights the inconsistency. Interestingly, however, models trained on the Mozilla advisory descriptions actually increased in performance when using NVD labels, which may attest to the quality of the NVD data source. To conclude, we have investigated the inconsistency of severity rankings produced by different vulnerability assessment data sources. Our study explored the characteristics, causes, and impacts of this inconsistency. Primarily, we observed there to be weak correlation in the produced severity orderings of each data source, and that vulnerabilities were typically judged to be of a lower severity at first reporting than at later stages. This suggests the need for better standardization of the assessment information provided in these data sources to increase their reliability. We also observed the vulnerability reporters to be an influential factor that leads to inconsistency, and hence we suggest perhaps better education and training for this vital task. Finally, we showed that the differences in data labels and descriptions can significantly impact the downstream task of severity prediction. So we advise caution for researchers of the data quality when performing data selection. We hope that our study encourages both developers and researchers to deploy more consideration towards the quality and consistency of vulnerability data sources. More information can be found in our paper by scanning this QR code.